Alliance. What an incredible journey we had so far. And we are not done yet. We have one more presentation to cap this wonderful week. Welcome to the fifth and last day of the district virtual refresher or training series. These past four sessions were phenomenal in terms of what we learned. And this evening, we continue with another great presentation by our esteemed guest speaker. Again, thank you all for taking the effort and the time from your busy schedules to be with us this evening. For those who are just attending now, my name is Lionel Rohel Bautista from the Somerville Metro Alliance Club of District 16J and incoming GLT coordinator of the district. Again, it's my pleasure to MC this final session. This training or refresher course is presented by the New Jersey Alliance of 16N, 16J, and 16L. Thanks to District 16J Governor-elect Varsha Naik for spearheading this event in collaboration with the governors elect of 16N and 16L, Lions Marie Nieto and Douglas Both, respectively. So, as in the four previous sessions, we will be following the same format. So, after the presentation, there will be a question and answer portion. So, we encourage everyone to please type your pertinent questions in the chat box. And please keep your microphones at all times, muted at all times. And also, as you have noted, we are recording this session. Without further ado, I would like to call PCC Mahesh Chitnis to say a few words. Thank you, Rohel, for uh, the great work that uh, you guys did over the entire week. Uh, we had a great presentation. We had very good uh, uh, response from our clubs. Uh, we had good good uh, attendance, and everybody was so so involved. And I I applaud you for doing that. I applaud you for uh, making sure that uh, we have our club officers trained, oriented, and ready to go for the the year as the as roaring as they can. Today is, is a, a very, very important day, day for me. Uh, I was introduced to this association 36 years back. I took that oath of office as a, as a Leo uh, 36 years back today. So uh, I would be uh, excited to hear one of my uh, colleagues, one of, one of my close friends, PID Cindy, and I know that she is one of the best presenters that our association has. So take advantage of that and all the best and enjoy the rest of your evening. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much for your kind words, past council chair Mahesh. I hope I live up to them. I want to thank district governor-elect Barsha for inviting me to participate. And of course, Lion Rohel for spearheading this. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. Just one thank second, you very Cindy. much for- Cindy, just one second. Oh, I'm sorry. I think <laughs> I, I just handed it over to you. Uh, Rohel still needs to introduce you. Yeah, all right. And now here is- oh. <laughs> We do need your, your, your resume. No problem at all. No, you can tell I'm anxious. <laughs> <laughs> and now here is incoming multiple district 16 GLT chair Anu Chitnis to introduce our presenter for this final session. Thank you, Lion Rohel. Uh, I would like to echo uh, Mahesh's sentiments. Uh, thank you to the district governor-elect Varsha and district governor-elect Marie, who have been here all five days watching uh, all the presentations with us uh, and being with us. I think uh, district governor-elect Doug could not join uh, due to some personal commitments, but I know he was also here uh, present uh, with us uh, in the spirit, right, as they say, he, but while he has to take care of other things. So I would like to introduce uh, PID Cindy to uh, uh, welcome to the today's presentation. Uh, Lion Cindy Gregg, past international director, was elected to serve 
a two-year term as a director of Lions Club International at the association's 96th convention held in Hamburg, Germany. I think I was in the audience at that time. Past director Greg is a retired music teacher and is a member of uh, Rostevere Township Lions Club since year 2000. Uh, obviously, she's held many offices within the association, starting from the uh, club president to the district governor, council chair, a district mall coordinator, uh, district LCIF coordinator, and obviously uh, office of international, international director. In recognition of her service to the association, she has received numerous awards, including Club Excellence Award, Leadership Award, two President's Medals, uh, four International President's Certificates of Appreciation, the Certified Guiding Lion Medal, and Joe L. Roblowski Award. She's also a progressive Melvin Jones Fellow. In addition to her impressive Lions resume, uh, PID Cindy is also an also active in numerous professional and community organizations, including the Arts and Education Collaborative Leadership Institute, National Association of Music Education, and American. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce this. Uh, PID. Okay. Uh, <laughs> PID Greg and her husband Tom, also a lion and progressive Melvin Jones fellow, have a son and daughter, both of whom are lions. They have one grandchild. So as you can see, lionism runs in family and potentially in DNA for future generations to come. <laughs> uh, thank you, PID Cindy, for uh, you know taking time from your busy schedule. I know you had many other things this week. But Varsha is very persuasive, so she, you probably couldn't say no to her. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome, uh, and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much, Lion Anu. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for attending the final session for the virtual leadership refresher to learn about the roles of the club secretary and the club treasurer. And of course, I would like to congratulate you on being elected to and for accepting these important positions. I know the past director, Jenny, did a great job of explaining the composition of the districts the other evening, as well as the Lions Code of Ethics. So I'm not going to go into that. But first of all, let's look at the office of the club secretary. This person keeps the club running smoothly. In fact, one of our Lions leaders described this position as the glue that holds the club together. The secretary is certainly dedicated, but should also be well organized, reliable, and a team player, because this person needs to work with a variety of personalities. And of course, this position has numerous duties. First, you serve as the liaison between the club, the district, the multiple district, and of course, Lions Clubs International. Likewise, as the recording officer, it is imperative that you attend all meetings. Nevertheless, for those emergencies or times when you may not be able to attend a meeting, you should plan ahead to have a backup to fulfill your duties. And while serving as club secretary, some of your primary responsibilities are to keep and maintain accurate club records. And this includes club and board meeting minutes, attendance records, committee appointments, election results, and current club membership information. And at least once a year, preferably every six months, you should download a club roster from my LCI and ask each member to verify their current contact information. By informing them that LCI does not sell their contact information, hopefully this will encourage the members to share their email address and correct phone number. And while most of our Lions magazines are now digital, several copies that are being mailed continue to be returned to Lions International due to old or incorrect addresses. Likewise, in maintaining the club's records, the secretary also should include the club's history, annual reports, old membership rosters, attendance sheets, and the federal ID number and tax forms. 
These can be scanned and placed on a thumb drive. And although most records should be kept for seven years, it's recommended that contracts and tax numbers should be kept indefinitely. You should also keep track of club achievements such as sponsors, awards, et cetera. Another important duty is to submit the monthly membership reports to LCI headquarters, preferably on my LCI by the 20th of each month. And for those who still do paper reports, these take much longer for LCI to upload. Furthermore, paper copies need to be sent to the district governor and the cabinet secretary. For those secretaries who do submit the membership reports on my LCI, your report will be updated immediately when you indicate if the club has gained or lost members throughout the month, or even if there is no change. And in the event of no change, that still needs to be communicated to LCI. In cooperation with the service chairperson, you will also report the club's service activities on my lion. And of course, by May 15th, you need to report new club officers, also known as the PU 101. And this needs to be reported to Lions Clubs International, but it's recommended that you do this as soon as your club holds its elections. This allows LCI to send vital information to the newly elected officers and also allows the district governor elect to access the information to prepare the district's directory. You'll also sure. work with the club's treasurer to issue dues statements, which shows a breakdown of dues to LCI, the multiple district, the district, and even your club. This may be sent quarterly or semi-annually to each member. And of course, LCI's invoices are based on your membership roster on December 31st. I'd like to hear it again, you know, just a professional fee. Oh, yeah. These in okay, I'm going to go back because I'm not sure when I got muted. But the LCI's invoices are based on your membership roster on December 31st and June 30th. So it is your responsibility to ensure that the rosters are accurate because the club will be billed and will be responsible for paying for those members who either resigned or are no longer active. However, for new members, the club will receive a prorated invoice when they're added. Likewise, it's your responsibility to collect the funds and record the payment and then turn the payments over to the club secretary, I'm sorry, to the club treasurer and obtain a receipt after which you'll provide the members with their membership card. Now, I do want to mention that some clubs do this a little differently, but that is the recommended way to do it. But your club, your way. In addition to the dues, you will also work with the club treasurer to file the form 990 by November 15th and to make a copy to keep your records. Failing to file this creates much paperwork to reinstate your nonprofit status. And during the times that you lose your status, you'll be billed on all monies collected, including club dues. You will also be a member, an active member of the district governor's advisory committee in your zone. This is comprised of the club president, first vice president and secretary, but it may also include the club membership and service chairs. Yet other officers and Lions members may attend the meetings. And I know that there was a question about this the other evening, but this is where you learn about various programs at the district, multiple district and international levels, particularly relating to membership, leadership and service. It also provides you with an opportunity to exchange ideas with other clubs, to discuss challenges, to brainstorm possible solutions and to meet lions from other clubs. At the conclusion of your term, you'll provide the general records of the club to your successor. However, rather than providing numerous boxes of files, it's a great idea to put all of the information onto a thumb drive. And of course, 
You want to be a valuable mentor to your successor. What are your meeting responsibilities? Well, about a week before each meeting, it's important to send meeting reminders. I know we're adults, but our members are busy and they certainly appreciate being reminded of the date, the time, location, and any additional information, such as if you're having a theme night, speaker, a service project, or maybe even a picnic. Along with the president and possibly the treasurer or a committee chair, develop an agenda. This can also be sent along with the meeting reminder. Likewise, you'll prepare minutes of the board and special meetings, paying particular attention to those actions that have a financial impact on the club. The minutes should include the date of the meeting, the beginning and ending times, the presiding officer's name, and because this serves as a permanent legal record, it must include the first and last names of those members who made and seconded motions as well as the results, whether it was approved, defeated, or tabled. It's not necessary though to include the discussions. In addition, committee reports should be summarized and reported. These minutes can also be sent with the meeting notification. The minutes can be stored electronically, but again, please make sure that you have a backup on a separate source because you need to have these in your files. At the meeting, you need to take attendance to determine if there's a quorum to conduct business and so that missing lions can be contacted. If newer lions are missing, their sponsor can be alerted to check on them. Perhaps there's a problem. Maybe their, um, their work schedule's changed or someone in their family is ill or perhaps the club is not meeting their expectations. So the sponsor or board of directors can brainstorm ways to better engage these members. Likewise, LCI has attendance pins that can be ordered and distributed toward the end of the year and are appreciated by many of our members. Furthermore, you'll want to note any guests who are in attendance. Likewise, the secretary should be seated to the right of the president to try to keep the meeting on track in case discussions get bogged down or to remind the president sometimes that there are action items on the floor. You're also responsible for sharing all correspondence with the proper committee and members in a timely manner. Try to share the district and multiple district newsletter electronically. In addition, you might want to bring attention to various articles or events that are occurring. There may be suggestions or events from the global action team coordinators or other Lions leaders. And of course, when sending emails, please use a business type of font and at least 12 or 13 print. And please avoid using bold for the entire email. For service activities or found fundraisers, download the certificate of insurance and have it at the activity. Present a copy to the Chamber of Commerce or to the township office to verify your coverage. Keep in mind that our basic insurance does not include accidents relating to alcohol consumption. So if you're planning to serve alcohol, you'll need to pay for additional insurance. This can either be purchased through LCI or you can purchase your own insurance policy to cover this. And at this time, I want to mention that in some states, baskets or raffles that contain alcohol are no longer permitted and could cause the club to be fined or to lose their nonprofit status or perhaps even be jailed. And I don't know if that affects multiple District 16, but it was recently passed in Pennsylvania and Florida and it's, uh, it occurs in several other states, so check into that. It's also your responsibility to order club supplies and awards. Likewise, confer with the membership chair to ensure that you have membership applications and brochures at every meeting and project. These can be downloaded and printed, or you can order them for free from SHOP, which is located on My Lion. In addition, you want to have new member kits available for induction ceremonies. These too can be ordered free of charge on shop. 
However, you'll need to order the lion's pin because it's no longer included in the packet. Similarly, every spring, secretaries are busy ordering plaques, attendance pins, and other awards from LCI. So try to plan ahead so that you have these important um, things, uh, supplies, when it's time. And since you are the club's liaison, you, along with the PR or marketing coordinator, should promote your club service and fundraising activities. Furthermore, you should inform members of neighboring club projects and events, as well as district and multiple district events, various institutes, the USA Canada Alliance Leadership Forum, and conventions. When the district governor is scheduled to visit, confirm the date, time, and location with him or her. Ask if anyone else will be accompanying him or her and if there are any dietary concerns. Share any particular challenges that the club would like to have addressed, or if there will be new members to be inducted. Everyone likes to be prepared. As an important member of the board, encourage the president and the board members to promote the Club Excellence Award. To achieve this, the club needs to be in good financial standing at the end of the year. You also need to complete the monthly membership and service activities reports on time. The club officers should have participated in club officer training. The club needs to have a net membership growth or to charter a new club or Leo club during the year. And at today's session with past international president, Brian Stevenson, he mentioned that branch clubs also count. So I need to confirm that, but that was what he had mentioned. That would be great because branch clubs only need five members to begin. The club must also donate to LCIF and you need to publicize your service activities, which of course is being done by many clubs through various social media outlets. And finally, the application must be submitted before September 30th for the previous year. But in order to accomplish this award, the clubs need to know and be aware of the criteria early in the year so that they can work toward this. Sometimes too, the secretary is charged with keeping the club charter. This is certainly important document should be proudly displayed at charter and special events of the club or else placed in an area where the community can see it so that they know where to go when they need help. Now, LCI has developed many outstanding resources to assist you in being an excellent secretary. First, I encourage you to take the club secretary self-study course that's available in the learn portion of my lion. It delves deeper into the responsibilities and tasks associated with your role that I may not have time or the opportunity to cover this evening. LCI staff has also assembled the secretary's ebook, which provides information and links to nearly everything that you will need during this year. It includes a link to the standard club constitution and bylaws, a link to download membership applications, instructions on how to change your password or to assign a club administrator. And particularly for those secretaries who don't have a computer or are technically uncomfortable, this is really important. However, be aware this will undergo some revisions following the International Convention. In fact, as I was preparing for tonight's webinar, a few of the links that I tried to engage had been deactivated. So they're already revising even as we speak. Likewise, if you Google, you can find some very valuable information in some of the other multiple districts. And furthermore, the club management resource page has almost every form imaginable. Now, I know that you had an excellent refresher on my lion last evening, but it's been my experience that you can never have too much training on this site. And while many of you are familiar with my lion, I want to share information on registering for the site in the event that there are a few secretaries who are new to this platform. LCI suggests that you use Google Chrome rather than Firefox. 
and after typing our address, www.lionsclubs.org, you will see member login that takes you to access to your Lion account. If you do not have an account, you will need to register. And of course, you need to know your membership number, which you can obtain from your previous secretary or club administrator. Or if you have a previous copy of Alliance magazine, you'll be able to see that on the label. But follow the instructions to create the account with a password. And because it's been a long time since I registered, I'm assuming that you may receive a temporary code in your email box to sign in, and then you'll be asked to change your password. Once you've gained access, you will see several links. To update your members, you need to click on My LCI. A key benefit to using My LCI is to fulfill your reporting responsibilities online rather than um, using paper forms, including the PU 101 form. Instead of completing the monthly membership and officer report forms and sending them to headquarters, you can enter and report this information on the My LCI site. And once you become more familiar with this, I know that you will find that it's very easy to use, less time consuming, and of course, more economical than doing the paper reports. Furthermore, my LCI makes identifying the club's official officers and dropping or adding members for membership status far more convenient and environmentally friendly. However, remember that if there's no change, you still need to click no change. Having on-demand access to membership information is another great reason to use my LCI. It's your one-stop shop for managing your club's membership because you can view, update, and download club member information whenever it's needed. You can print a roster to take attendance at club meetings or download a directory with just a few simple steps. So let's review some of the functions of my LCI and how to perform some of your tasks. Under members, you can add, drop, transfer or edit membership categories, such as family membership, Leo, Lion, associate, affiliate, et cetera, as well as other pertinent information. And I recommend that you try to input this information as soon after the board meetings as possible so that you don't forget. Again, even if there are no changes and you need to click no changes. Likewise, you can see all the club members that were dropped back to 2001. And this is important because if you want to invite them to attend one of your events or to ask them to rejoin as a member, that might be important. Circumstances change and they might be eager to rejoin. To print membership cards, select the format of the card stock that you've purchased and then select those members' names that need cards. On the left, you'll see a list of the club members and then double click on the names that you want to print. They will appear on the right hand side and then you can click print or if you want to select all of the names so that you can distribute as the members pay their dues, you can do that too. Similarly, you can print various reports such as attendance sheets, club achievements like sponsors, awards, etc. Your club invoices are retained on this site for two years. After your election in the spring, you can add officers by clicking enter next year's officers and click on the members' names in the appropriate office. The president, secretary, and administrator can also enter these reports. But please remember to print a copy for your records. Unfortunately, you never know when something might go awry. So keep a copy for your own records. Likewise, if you sponsor a LEO club, list the LEO advisor and at least one youth. And of course, if you encounter problems, contact IT. On my line, you can record the club service activities for each month which can help to promote your club. And of course, I'm very aware that when this was first unveiled, many secretaries became frustrated and promised to never report again. 
Fortunately, LCI worked with the company to simplify the reporting so that it's just one page. However, there are still many lions who are reluctant to use this site. On My Lion, you can also view the activities of other clubs. You can provide your club with new ideas on what is working in your geographic area. And while all members, especially committee chairs, can enter future activities, it's only the president, secretary, and club administrator, as well as the service chair, who can report this information. For new clubs, the guiding lion also has the ability to report. Now, signature projects are those that repeat on a regular basis, like working at a food bank or a soup kitchen or something like that. The other categories include meetings, fundraisers, service projects, donations, and these can be listed under our five global causes, or if they don't fit those causes, then other. Now, why does CI ask you to enter this data? Well, it's to verify that we are meeting our goal of serving 200 million people annually. And on Wednesday, Vice President Doug said that we actually served 375 million people this year, even with COVID. And of course, that's only with about 52% of the clubs reporting. Imagine if we could have had 75 or 80% report. Obviously, there are times that you will need to use your best judgment in estimating the number of people who are impacted. For example, highway cleanups. Well, determine the number of people who travel this area every day. However, keep in mind that LCI has capped this number at 3,000, even though sometimes more people are actually served. But these numbers tend to even out with projects where they were overestimated. And of course, please remember to save and then report all information that's highlighted in pink, or as LCI says, in red. You'll also need to determine if you only want this to be seen by your club members or by everyone. Now, why wouldn't you want everyone to see it? These are our success stories. So please describe your projects in detail so that others can get ideas of how to plan for their activities. Upload photos. Again, save your work. For activities that occasionally repeat, there's a duplicate copy option so that you just need to change the date or the people who attended. Furthermore, the metrics area provides data for groups that are looking to form viable partnerships, such as the Bill Gates Foundation. It also provides information for those who are seeking help. And finally, it shows that Lions are definitely making a difference. Wow, that's quite a lot. So where do we begin? The first 30 days of your term is crucial to having a successful year. Again, confirm that your club's roster and contact information are accurate. Remember that the invoices will be based on the membership numbers on June 30th. So work with your present secretary to confirm everything. In my LCI, under the My Lions Club reports, run the family unit report to review family unit members to ensure accuracy. Work with the club treasurer to send dues invoices. Use my LCI print membership cards as dues are received from members. Collaborate with the club president to prepare a club calendar to keep members engaged and aware of monthly club and board meeting dates, Leo activities, and the governor's visitation. Work with the membership chair to schedule a membership drive and include those dates if possible. Include dates of district events, such as the convention, cabinet and zone meeting dates, the international convention, the USA Canada Alliance Leadership Forum dates and location, as well as various leadership institutes or trainings. Work with your club service chair to determine service activity dates. After all, we know when International Diabetes Day is or Vision Day. So add those. Um, September is Cancer Awareness, Pediatric Cancer Awareness. Prepare your own calendar for completing tasks. 
like membership and service reporting, meeting dates, special visits, new officer reporting, deadlines for meeting reminders, agenda planning, and preparing minutes. Attend club officer training offered by your district to learn about new initiatives and the district goals. Order supplies to ensure that you have membership applications and new member kits. And remember to do your monthly reports. Try to do this immediately following the board meetings. And of course, make copies and back up all of your records on a different thumb drive. Now, some districts, and I don't know if MD16 has these, but some districts present 100% secretary awards. And if you don't have this, you might want to consider it. But to qualify in most districts, you need to attend district club officer training, submit your monthly membership reports by the 20th of each month, even if there's no change, to attend two zone meetings and two cabinet meetings, to report the new club officers by May 15th, and to ensure that the club is in good standing by seeing that all bills are paid. I hope that I've covered everything. In my LCI, I would recommend that you use the practice link under support and experiment with it. That's the only way that you're going to be more comfortable. Try out the various links to learn what's available. Take the club secretary course in learn and bookmark the club secretary ebook to find links quickly. Likewise, keep in mind that each club functions differently. So you may have additional responsibilities, including the club newsletter. On the other hand, there may be other members in the club who are willing to help with some of your duties. So thank you for your attention. I hope that this has been helpful and I wish all of the secretaries a successful year. But now we're going to move on to club treasures. As with, clubs, as with club secretaries, I'm sorry, the club treasures responsibilities also vary to regional practices and established club procedures. Nevertheless, as treasurer, you are the financial officer of the club and are responsible for all financial matters pertaining to the club. However, you are under the supervision of the president and the board of directors and are part of a team that supports the club president. These are your primary responsibilities to attend all club and board meetings and prepare a report which is included in the club minutes. To prepare club budgets in conjunction with the finance committees and club president and present this for approval at the first board meeting. Now to delve into this a little bit more, the treasurer will work with the club president and finance committee to prepare the annual budget keeping in mind that the club may not create any indebtedness beyond the current income and then present the budget to the board for approval. Remember though, that a budget is just an estimate of the total money allocated for a certain purpose. So it can be adjusted throughout the year if necessary. By carefully anticipating revenue and prioritizing spending, the club can assure that it remains fiscally sound. The budget includes both income and expenses. All Lions Club should have two budgets, one for the administrative fund and one for the activity or the projects fund. For a budget to balance, the total income must equal the expenses for each individual fund. That means that the administrative fund and the activities fund budgets must balance independently of each other. The administrative fund comes from dues, tail twisting fines, 50-50s, and other monies raised directly from the members, and it finances club operations. If meals are included as part of the club dues, they must be included in the administrative budget. Payments from the administrative funds include, but aren't limited to, LCI, district and multiple district dues, office expenses for the club, any expenses accrued for website hosting or other public relation efforts, as well as payments to restaurants, catering services, or club members for meals for both the club members and Lions guests. The activities or projects, which sometimes is referred to as the charitable fund, finances the club activities and projects. 
The income for this fund is from public fundraising projects, including raffles, bingos, et cetera. The expenses will be the direct costs of the fundraisers, as well as the donations and charitable activities of the clubs. Income from the club's fundraising projects cannot be used to defray the club's administrative cost. Even if the club advertises the funds raised will be used for the club's own purposes. So be careful about that. The club can, however, deduct the direct operating expenses of the fundraising project from the funds raised. Now, this next statement is extremely important. Under no circumstances can activities money, which was raised through public projects, be used for administrative expenses, such as compensating club dues. Alternatively, administrative funds, if approved by the club board of directors, can be transferred to an activity fundraising account for club projects. With advice from the finance committee and the approval of the board of directors, the treasurer sets annual club members dues at an amount that is sufficient to effectively operate the club and maintain its financial health based on dues amounts from LCI, the multiple district, and your district. You also want to consider annual events like the parade of checks or other special charities to ensure that your club is represented or to even set aside funds for deaths or illness where donations, flowers, or cards may be appropriate. Likewise, you should work with the club secretary to send out invoices for total member dues. And LCI recommends that the, these be sent approximately 10 days before the start of the dues paying period. So if you haven't done it, that's now. However, you should also consider various membership types like the student or the Leo Lion, um, because these are half price dues, uh, the family, dues, the head of the household pays full Lions International dues with up to four additional members at the same address who pay half price international dues. And we have associate members who have their primary membership in one club and pay the international dues to that, but they may belong to another club due to work related activities or maybe they're helping to rebuild that club. So they might only pay local dues for something like that. And of course, most of us have snowbirds. So again, they would pay their primary club, um, the international dues and pay the affiliate club for local dues. The life member, and this was mentioned the other night, but this is a one-time international fee of $650. You need to have, have been a member for at least 20 years and be 70 years of age, or if you're in ill health. And in that case, you don't pay any more international dues if you are a life member. Dues should be collected in advance because you have to pay Alliance International. It, this can be done annually or semi-annually. Some clubs collect them quarterly, and a few even do it monthly to make it more convenient for their members, but that's a lot more work for the secretary and treasurer. So whatever works for your club. However, Lions International will bill you semi-annually based on your roster on June 30th and December 31st. So again, collaborate with the secretary to ensure that the records are accurate. Now you have additional responsibilities too. You receive all monies from the secretary and then deposit them in a bank recommended by the finance committee, approved by the board of directors. Nevertheless, club payments always go to the secretary for recording and then to you to deposit. You should keep a list of who has paid dues and then compare that with the secretary. Immediately pay out monies for club obligations only on the authority of the board of directors. 
Keep and maintain general records of club receipts and disbursements. And we'll talk about having a paper tra trail in a few minutes. Prepare and submit monthly and semi-annual financial reports to the club's board of directors. And I'll talk about those reports in a little bit. Give bond for the faithful discharge of the office in sum and with surety as determined by the board of directors. And for clubs that make a lot of money, this is really important. Unfortunately, there have been instances where the club's secretary or treasurer have misappropriated funds. So be proactive. We want everyone to feel as if they're trusted, but sometimes the temptation is just too great, even by well-meaning lions. So consider that. We had one club a few years ago that owned a bowling alley. And unfortunately, the secretary absconded with the funds. So the club doesn't exist anymore. At the conclusion of your term in office, deliver in a timely manner the club's financial accounts, funds, and records to your successor. In addition to paying all the dues, the club treasurer is responsible for making payments for items that have been purchased by the club. Remember that you, the president, and the secretary are the only officers who can purchase items through the club's account. To create the proper paper trail of financial transactions, Payment for any purpose should not be made by cash, but instead by checks drawn on one of the club's bank accounts. Receipts for all checks should be retained in a file that's open and available to the audit committee and any club members anytime there is a question. Budgets and financial reports should re be retained in a permanent file for the club history and should be retained for a period of at least seven years. This file includes bank statements and canceled checks. We don't get too many of those anymore. Invoices and receipts, financial reports, tax returns, and other governmental filings. You'll also want to select financial report format that is clear, easy to follow, and accurate. And this is just an example of one. It's not one that you have to use, but it should include the amount budgeted for expenses, itemized income and expenses for the period since the last financial report. It should have a running total, the amount of money the club actually spent on community projects. And you may want to compare the same figures from the previous um, year, whenever you held the same project. The net monetary assets of the club at the beginning and the ending of the report. Furthermore, there's special software that can be helpful with preparing your monthly reports. And remember that all club budgets and financial reports should be retained in a permanent file for the club's history. And although all U.S. clubs chartered under Lions Clubs International are exempt from federal income tax, all clubs need to file an IRS tax exempt form. If your annual gross receipts are $50,000 or less, you must file the e-post card, also known as 990N. And this needs to be filed by November 15th. It's short, easy, and electronic. But you'll write your club's name and mailing address, a web address if you have one, and most do now, your employer identification number, otherwise known as the EIN, the organization's annual tax period, and most of us, I think, use Lions International so that we use July 1st to June 30th. As you also need to include the name and address of the principal officer and a statement to confirm that the organization's annual gross receipts are normally $50,000 or less. Now for those clubs that collect $100,000 or more, Form 990 needs to be used. And both of these forms can be found on the IRS website. For federal purposes, Lions Clubs are not considered charities and donations to Lions Clubs or projects are not deductible as charitable contributions. 
It's proper to refer to Alliance Club as a tax exempt or a not for profit organization, but we cannot refer to us as a charity. If you don't file the 990, your club risks losing its tax exempt status. And any Lions Club that fails to meet its annual reporting requirement for three consecutive years automatically loses this tax exempt status. And it takes a lot of work to try to get it back. Now, last evening, Lion Mike did an excellent job of explaining how to access my LCI. And of course, there are many benefits to using my LCI, one being that you can view past statements, semi-annual dues, and billing invoices back two years. Likewise, you can make partial or full payments with Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, PayPal, or eChecks by clicking the Pay Now link on the statement page. And of course, print a receipt to verify your payment. Your bill should be paid immediately following your board's approval. And for payment of dues, some clubs give a blanket approval to pay these immediately without having to go to the board. These statements can be viewed by club and district officers the same day that they're generated. And you will receive an itemized statement of charges and credits from LCI headquarters each month in which transactions occur or when the club has a balance. And these may include dues invoices in July and January, entrance and charter fees after December 31st, because remember that the board did waive paying entrance and charter fees for the first half of this year. Your invoices may be prorated um, dues for new members. You might have fees for reinstated members or transfer and life members. There might be online store charges for club supplies. And of course you will see your club statements. Still, it's important that you regularly monitor your account to verify that all payments made to Lions Clubs International have been correctly credited to the club. If, however, your payment is not shown on the account, resend the payment identification information to accounts receivable at lionsclubs.org. And that's why it's imperative that you make copies of everything. If you're paying by check, please write your complete club name, the club number, and the purpose of the payment on the front of the check to ensure that the payment is applied to the club's account in a timely manner. All checks need to be signed by the treasurer and countersigned by one other officer as determined by your board of directors. Clubs with an unpaid balance of $20 per member or $1,000 per club, whichever is less after 120 days, will be removed from active status and are ineligible to vote at district and multiple district conventions. The club can continue to hold meetings to discuss the future and to identify actions to regain an active status, but you cannot hold fundraisers, so that makes it a little difficult. Nevertheless, a suspended club can be reactivated within 90 days by either paying the outstanding balance in full or by contact, contacting LCI to arrange a payment plan and to make monthly installment payments. Otherwise, the charter of the club can be automatically canceled after the 90 day suspension period. Once new club officer reported to LCI headquarters, an email is sent that provides information on how to access the system and to select your password. So it's important for the secretary to submit the officer information to LCI. And of course, officers have to have an email address to be able to gain access to the website. But remember that you won't have full access until July 1st. So treasures, you can work with your, your um, predecessor to be able to practice and to see what they have, but you're not gonna have full access until July 1st. On the My LCI Club Officer homepage, you'll find My Tasks, 
which displays a list of tasks that are customized to the treasurer's role and your club. And again, I would suggest that you experiment with this whenever you have an opportunity. My members displays your club's membership reporting status and the membership count by member type, family, Leo Lion, um, your um, associate or affiliate members, et cetera. My club displays the information about your club meetings that's been reported in the database. My info displays your own personal contact information. So you wanna make sure that that's accurate. My officer section shows your region and zone officers, as well as other members of your club's leadership team. And once again, you and the secretary can use data download to be able to email bills. As with the secretary's position, LCI has many outstanding resources for treasures. I cannot stress the importance of the treasures ebook on the LCI website. I consider this to be the treasures Bible because it has links to almost any question that you could possibly have, including how to pay electronically. There's also the club officers team manual. Um, that's LA 15, it's a PDF and it's under leadership development. There's a club treasure module in the learn section. Lions University's bachelor course has um, treasures responsibilities. And again, many district and multiple districts have training videos, YouTube videos and PowerPoints that are available on their websites. And finally, even though it's not listed finally there. The best practice for financial transparency guide is found in the LCI Member Resource Center. It provides basic information for financial reporting, guidelines for reimbursement, the maintenance of bank accounts, and conducting how to conduct year-end audits. Now, some tasks for you to complete now to attend a local training. Receive all monies and deposit that into the bank. Meet with your current treasurer and the audit committee because the audit needs to be done annually. This is also for your protection. Work with the president to appoint a finance committee. And of course, remember your club your way. If your club is too small to have this committee, then just ignore it. Review the current budget and adjust as necessary. Confirm the bank accounts and change signatures, but this should not be done until after July 1st. And you should have two signatures on the, the accounts. Select a report format that's simple and one that can be understood by all members. Establish a filing system to maintain your records throughout the year. Create an account and review training materials on my LCI. Collaborate with the secretary to confirm the club roster for billing purposes, prepare dues notices and membership cards. Now, tips for a successful year. Transparency of finances is so important. Your lions have a right to know about the financial conditions of a club. Concise and factual reporting will reduce questions and will enhance your credibility. And if club members are used to purchasing items for meetings or fundraisers, explain ahead of time that they need to present receipts in order to be reimbursed. Likewise, if a club member gives the treasurer cash from a fundraiser, provide a receipt for the cash with a copy that goes into the club records. Pay all bills promptly using a method that will provide evidence if there's ever a question. Utilize technology as much as possible because computer spreadsheet is neater and in the long run, it's much easier to use. Remember to get permits for white cane collections, small games of chance, such as bingo, and raffles. If you sell items with the Lions logo, ensure that the vendor has LCI's authorization or your club could be fined. I know of an instance where this happened last year whenever one of the clubs was selling Lions bracelets um, and they had, they had Lions logos and they had to stop selling them. 
Finally, a continuously large bank account is not indicative of a successful club or a successful year. You may have heard the expression that a good club is a broke club. And while I'm not advocating that you declare bankruptcy, but your community is generously supporting your efforts because they trust that you will use those funds to make a difference in your community. Again, I hope that I've provided you with some new information, even for you veteran treasurers. Thank you for all that you do and for attending the session this evening. And if you have any questions, I will attempt to answer them or to find someone who can provide a proper response. So thank you. Well, that's a lot of great information, the IB Cindy. Well, thank you. Thank you uh, for that enlightening and informative presentation on the role of secretary and treasurer. I am sure that it has sparked inspiration to current and future secretaries and treasurers. And we are truly blessed for this uh, wonderful opportunity. I know there's a lot of questions. And while you compose <laughs> them, and uh, uh, I mentioned earlier that those questions, uh, please uh, type them in the chat box so we could manage them better. But uh, while you do that, uh, let me uh, call Council Chair-elect Armando Guerra for a short talk. Light Armando. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, awesome. Well, what a great week the, and exciting the week that we had. The, we started off with the PID Sangita, and then our, our, the, ours truly, PCC Mahesh Chitnis, PID Jenny Ware was exciting, PCC Mike Eisenberg was uh, very informative, and we're finishing off uh, icing on the cake with PID Cindy, such informative. Thank you very much for educating our alliance. Thank you to, for all the information that you have provided. This, uh, this week has been truly a New Jersey uh, MD16 forum. It was amazing. And uh, to top it off with uh, the international the convention that's going on uh, at the moment. I'll tell you that we need to take all this information from this week and we take it back to our clubs and apply it and uh, learn so we can make it a great year. Thank you everyone for participating. Thank you uh, everyone for uh, being at the, with us. Thank you, uh, Line Varsha, DG Elect Varsha, and Marie Neto, and all the Lions that have participated in this week's session. We thank you all and let's make it a great year. God bless. Thank you, Line Armando. And now we go to the much awaited portion, the question and answer. And uh, may I request that for all questions, please type them in the chat box so we could manage them better. Okay, I, we have one question here and uh, okay. The ID Cindy, this is the question. How do we manage non-paying members? That's interesting. We need to, um, it's also a great question. Um, we need to find out if they're not paying because of um, their financial background and if that's the reason, then perhaps we could have someone sponsor them, or that's when you, your board of directors could vote to use the tail twister fund to offset the, the cost of the dues. Perhaps too, you could ask if they could afford to pay a dollar a week, because if you break it down to a dollar a week, that might be a little bit more reasonable for them to be able to, to save that amount. Um, but I think a lot of our clubs do have that. Now, for those that just choose not to pay, we need to find out um, why they're not paying. Do they want to be members? Do they want to continue? Do they want to serve the community? Um, so I hope that... Then answered the question. Let's see. Any more? Thank you, Daddy Cindy. 
Okay. Uh, how do we how do you navigate dropped members in my LCI? That's a question. Online cash. Again. Again, your secretary would go to members and then under that category, you can add, you can drop, and that's where you would do that. And your, um, your club administrator, if you have one, could also help with that. And if you need to go to the district administrator, they also have access to be able to, to do that to help you out but you certainly want to drop those members before July 1st so that you won't be billed for them. I hope that answers the question. Any uh, other questions? I, let's see. How do we, uh, there's one more here. How do we see the drop members in the past since I don't have access to that because um, I'm not a secretary and I don't have access, but I believe that you would go to, um, you would look at the club records. This is when you would, um, you would try all of those different um, areas there. As I mentioned, you need to kind of test things out Perhaps too, your club administrator would be able to help you or the district administrator. But unfortunately, I don't have access to that. So I can't tell you specifically. However, I know that this can be found. Okay, and Lion Jack said that there is a drop member report, but I think that he was referring going back because I had said that you could go back to 2001 and um, you would be able to see all the members that had been dropped during that time. And of course, LCI staff is always available to be able to help with that too. They're wonderful. Okay, and here's another question. I, I think. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very uh, Cindy. Sorry. I thought that I had seen something about um, the club administrator. The club administrator is kind of like another recording secretary for the club, so that they have access. They would gain access to be able to add members. Um, delete members, do the reports, particularly if the secretary doesn't feel comfortable working with, with my LCI or my lion, and to be able to add the service reports. So um, that is something that can be done, and you can find information about this on the club, the e club secretary book. As I said, almost any question that you have can be found in that book. And if you can't find it there and you still want to know, contact LCI. I guess, uh, yeah, there's this question from Vishnu. If we drop members on August, but effective from June, how membership count how oh, does membership count, I guess, and its effect on the bill? As long as you drop the members before June 30th, you will not be billed for them. But if they stay until July 1st, even if you drop them July 1st, you will be billed and will be expected to pay for those members. So check to make sure, unfortunately, if, you, if any of the members ha have died, you don't want them to continue on the roll. Some clubs keep them because they've, they've paid their dues through the year and that's fine, but you need to drop them at the end of June. Otherwise, someone's gonna have to pay for their dues and, and they won't be benefiting from anything. If we have any technical issues with my LCI or my Lion, how would we contact IT support? It's a good question. I, I think that there is a link um, when you try to get into 
My LCI, thank you, Lion Winster. It has my lion at lionsclubs.org. And you'll probably receive a message that says that you are number such and such, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. You also will be asked to fill in a little bit above the line to explain what your problem is. So thank you, Lion Winster. Okay, it looks like we, there are no more questions. Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, we'd like to, to move forward with the last part of tonight's uh, session. Now I'd like to call 16N, District Governor-elect Marie Nieto for some concluding words. Um, thank you to all who participated in tonight's Secretary and Treasurer Leadership Refresher and to past International Director Cindy Gregg for such a fantastic presentation. To our past presenters, PID Sangita Jada, past Council Chair Mahesh Chitnis, past International Director Jennifer Ware, and past Council Chair Mike Eisenberg for their presentations. On behalf of District Governor-elect Doug Both from 16L and myself, I would like to thank District Governor-elect Varsha Nayak for allowing our districts to join in this event. I would also like to thank our uh, Council Chair-elect Armando Guerra for your support and leadership. Last but not least, I would like to thank District 16J GLT Rogel Bautista for such an amazing job as MC. I believe he deserves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Lion Marie. Uh, and here is 16J District Governor-elect Varsha Naik for a few words of acknowledgement. Thank you, Rohel, and good evening, Lions. I would like to personally thank you for taking out the time out of your busy day and to be a part of this the leadership refresher series. In Lionism, we all are leaders. And this way, this is just a way for us to be refresh ourselves before we start our new year. I would like to thank all the presenters who took time out and trained the New Jersey Lions. Thank you, PID Cindy, for your excellent presentation on club secretary and the treasurer. We are truly blessed for your presence. And at this point, I would like to say thank you so much, PID Sangeeta Jatia, PCC Lion Mahesh Chitnis, PID Jenny Ware, PCC Lion Mike, and last but not least, PID Cindy Greg. Thank you so much. And I would like to say thank you to all the district officers and the multiple district officers. I would like to say the names. Give me one, give me one sec. PCC elect Armando Guerra. PCC and State Advisor incoming, uh, Lion Mahesh Chitnis, PCC Jack Romano, PCC Winster, PDG Don, PDG Arut Chuha, our District Governor from 16J, Kevin Kosobuki, uh, District Governor-elect Murray from District N, District Governor-elect from Dix District L, Doug Both, Doug Both, and our first VDG-elect, Lion Cash Delory from 16J, Second VDG elect from District L, Lion Donna Fedel, our GMT 16L current, Subarna Sahani, and District Treasurer Dinah. If I miss anyone, please, th please thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, all the Lions of 16J, 16L, and 16N for joining. And I wish the best of luck to all the new incoming officers to gather. We have the ability to make this year a great. And there is so much that we can do if we work and motivate each other. Our district administration is ready to help in any way that is needed. And remember that we are one big family. And a big shout out to District, uh, district 16J, 
uh, GLT Lion Rohel for your great, great, great work. Thank you so much. And once again, have a good night and let's connect at each other. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Lion Varsha. Let's and make a heart. <laughs> Everybody can make a heart and someone take a picture, please. That's what I'm going to <laughs> Uh, our customary or tra tradition for this week <laughs> before <laughs> the remarks. Let's have a class picture. Let's Just have a picture. <laughs> picture me, please, uh, because we're going. Uh, if you can make a that hard, that would be great, uh, right? Because uh, that's the international uh, thing. When I, yeah. For this year, okay. So get ready. Make yeah. that hard. I cannot because I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, page one. Okay. Keep doing that. One, two, three, cheese. Okay, let me go to page two in my screen. Okay, one more time, please. One, two, three, cheese. Okay, thanks a lot. That's a lot of hearts. Okay, and now for the uh, closing remarks. I would like to say it's been a, an incredible journey of learning or refreshing this week and hopefully we have gained an arsenal of tools that will help us in our journey in this coming Lion year and beyond. We hope that all attendees have gained a lot of insights and inspiration and motivation that would give more depth and meaning in our Lion service. And thank you everyone who are here tonight for your wonderful presence that made this event possible. It's great to know the presence of lions from other countries at the other side of the world, from the Philippines, from Nepal, I think from India too, that's wonderful. And before we say goodbye, I would like to share another favorite quotation, if I may, to ponder upon or reflect on, if you will. The true measure of success is not how much you have accomplished in life of, as a person, but by how much of yourself you have shared in the service of others from yours truly. Good night, everyone. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, PID Cindy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> have a great weekend. Take care.